Have you ever had a viral tweet? Like hundreds and thousands of people retweeting and hearting your simple commentary about the way the world works? Well, me neither. But if you're shooting for that sweet, hollow internet fame one day, you came to the right video. I'm Toby the Great, and this is how tweets go viral. But hold on one second. I'm not going to teach you about how to think outside the box in your life or how to buy retweets or pretty much the same type of info that every other video on Twitter will tell you. This is a coding video and this will be about code, specifically the code that powers the Twitter platform, all the tweets on Twitter, what viral essentially means and then how it happens. So by the time you finish this video, you'll learn what happens to your tweet the second you click that tweet button, what factors determine which tweets die and which ones gain traction, and how you can use the Twitter recommendation system to go viral, all under the umbrella of learning code, specifically Toby the Great Code, so you know it's just my opinion and based off of no facts. So if you like this type of content, why not drop a like on this video, which helps the YouTube recommendation system pick up my videos. Now let's get right into it. Okay, let's say I'm feeling inspirational or I'm in my feelings about something. I want to make a tweet and share it with the world or my 36 followers. On my end, it's a little text box that takes my words and when I click tweet, it carries away my 180 characters to who knows where, but it somehow ends up on my home feed. But on Twitter's side, it's a completely different story. Instead of a colorful home feed filled with buttons and images, it's a system of functions, alerts, schedules, and rules. Take the act of tweeting for instance. It's a function that triggers once the tweet button is clicked. I'm guessing this is what it looks like, inputs and all. Parameters like the tweet text, user handle, and follower count are some, but probably not all of the actual inputs. But out of all of these inputs to a tweet, what do you think is the most important factor to becoming viral? If you guessed your actual tweet, good try, but no. How about your follower count? That's definitely important for social media in general, but it's actually not the number one factor to reaching viral status. It's really the timestamp. The timestamp of your tweet matters so much for how it blows up, and I'll explain why in a bit. But for now, let's see what happens internally on Twitter once your tweet is sent. So this is a bunch of wild shots in the dark that I'm guessing is at least partially true. The first thing that would happen is Twitter would send your tweet to the massive database they keep of every single user's tweets. The next thing that probably happens is for every follower you have, your tweet is personally delivered to their home feed or they get a notification if they have that enabled. And in one of the final but most important steps, the velocity of the tweet is tracked using the timestamp that we talked about before. Just so we're being clear, a timestamp is a specific moment in time when an event occurs. And in this case, it's when the tweet button is clicked. That means that as soon as you click that button, your tweet is being tracked specifically from the moment in time you click that button. And why is that so important? On almost every social media platform, there's this concept of a post velocity. It's basically how fast your post keeps getting more and more attention, whether that's pictures on Instagram, posts on Facebook, or tweets on Twitter. All of these platforms have their own recommendation systems to decide which are the best posts to promote to new users and people outside of your circle. And how do they do that? Most of them are probably using post velocity as the best way of deciding that. If one tweet gets 200 favorites in one hour versus another tweet that gets 100 favorites in one hour, which one do you think Twitter is gonna promote more to new users? Yeah. I thought so. But what if I had told you that that tweet with 100 hearts is from an account of 100k followers and the one with 200 hearts has only 1000? Does your answer change? Well, it shouldn't. Even though your followers still matter, let me explain with exactly how your follower count factors into your tweet promotion. After your tweet is sent, there are a few different levels of promotion that happens. The first and most immediate one is sending that tweet to all of your followers. Without a doubt, your tweet will be sent to everyone that follows your account, unless you're shadow banned, something I might talk about in a future video. And after that, the next level of promotion is less common, but it's even more important for going viral. I represent it here with the function send to network, 
then the parameters here will probably be fewer since there's going to be more logic that happens inside the function. Sending to network means to your followers followers. You get notifications not only for what people you follow tweet, but some of the tweets that they favorite or retweet. Notice that I said some, not all. Obviously, if you follow a bunch of people who are active on Twitter, the platform will be unusable if you're getting notifications every single second about some new tweet or some new favorite or retweet. No, Twitter is not trying to pollute your feed. Twitter wants to show you the tweets that you're most likely to engage with. But how does it decide that? Well, there's probably an engagement function, one that looks something like this. Engagement on social media is when people not only see your post, but interact with it in some way. On Twitter, you can easily see this with things like retweets, favorites, and replies. But what's not really known are all the hidden factors that Twitter uses. Some of my guesses are how many times people click on your profile after seeing your tweet and the amount of time that people spend scrolling through your tweet's reply thread. All of these inputs get thrown together in this function and go through a bunch of internal calculations that will generate some sort of engagement score. And this incredibly important engagement score decides what happens with your tweet after your immediate followers first see it, and it decides on whether or not your tweet flops or blows up and the tweet velocity comes back into play here. Let's imagine a global schedule system in the Twitter code base that periodically checks the engagement scores of every tweet. Maybe it's a few seconds, a few minutes, but definitely not much longer than that, because this scheduling is the heartbeat of Twitter, and it constantly checks and updates the status of lots of things, especially the current engagement of each tweet. So every tweet should be going through the system and getting their engagement score checked like constantly. If you have a tweet that has an increasing engagement score every time you check it, it will get promoted more. The more velocity a tweet has, the more viral it becomes. It will get sent to more followers of followers and it will show up in more notifications that give you suggested tweets. So there you have it. That is how tweets go viral on Twitter. Now I know this video is going to be missing some major parts of Twitter such as the trending section and hashtags, but for a list of reasons I'm not going to go into depth in this video about them. For one, the trending system and the hashtag system are probably deserving of their own videos and it's outside the scope of this one. Two, what's trending on Twitter is likely largely dependent on what's getting the highest engagement scores and most tweet velocity, which was already explained in this one, so I don't think I need to go more in depth about that. And three, the purpose of this video was already accomplished. I showed you the system that I believe makes tweets go viral, and you can use the information in this video, even if it's mostly guesses, to craft your own tweets that gets really popular in the first hour and then just blows up in the next ones. So this video was really fun to make. It took a lot of time to plan and design and code and all of it, but I really hope you enjoy it and watch the entire thing. Thank you for 200 subscribers. I'm really thrilled. I have a lot of cool things planned in the future, so make sure you stay tuned and watch for the next video. Thanks for watching. Peace.